An innocent bug allows to pick more server files than it's supposed to. What can go wrong? Well, this one will escalate quickly. Let's go! Hi, this is CDF School, a place where you can learn more about hacking and computer security, solving capture the flag challenges. Last week, I've participated in TFC CTF 2022, organized by the few chosen CTF team. It turns out to be a very cool competition with a lot of original challenges. Today, we're going to look at task named Include What Matters that was part of the web category. The description is short and just tells us about the flag format and informs that the flag has a random name and is stored in a random location. Sounds mysterious. During the CTF, we could start our own instance of this challenge using start container button and get a unique URL to hack the application. The bad news are that the infrastructure was shut down quickly after an event, but thanks to the challenge author sharing the code, we can run it locally as a Docker container. The task name suggests that we're gonna deal with local file inclusion, or LFI for short. But what is LFI and how does it make apps vulnerable? Let's talk about it before we start playing with the application itself. In many cases, web application serves dynamic content based on user request parameters. In example, the app routing can take the subpage file name as an URL query param and then display it as a part of the rendered website. If implemented this way, routing should prevent from loading files that are not subpage files and to achieve this, user input should be properly sanitized. In example, not allowing to use dots and slashes. If the user input is not filtered, then attacker can easily read server contents, including secret configuration files, access keys or server logs. And in some cases, this can even lead to a remote code execution, allowing to take full control over application's server. Of course, the filtering that prevents it can be implemented incorrectly. In that case, it can be prone to being bypassed, in example, using URL encoded characters, Various payloads helping to achieve this can be found on Payloads All the Things, the page that I'm using very often together with other CTF-related GitHub repositories. I will publish them in future videos and on the community tab that YouTube recently unlocked for me thanks to your engagement. Back to filter bypassing techniques, I think in our case it will be slightly easier. But let's not jump ahead too soon and see how the provided application looks like. As you can see, it's a very simple site with hello message on top and a link allowing to test its functionality. It does not work too good though, as clicking on it, we get an error. The message tells us a lot about what we're facing. Even without an access to source code, we can immediately say that this application is written using PHP. We can also see it tried to include test.txt file, but failed to do so. Where does this test.txt comes from? The link we've clicked took us to the URL with a query string param named file equal to test.txt. It seems that we can control what files are displayed using PHP include directive. Let's try if the input is sanitized accessing slash etc slash password file. And bingo, we can see its contents. No filtering at all. Told you this will be an easy one. Now, the only thing that's left is to include the flag file and successfully end another episode of CTF School. But wait, what should we include to get the flag? Flag has a random name and is stored in a random location, remember? We would need more than just LFI to solve the challenges and for a hint, we can get back to payloads all the things repository. As I've mentioned, LFI can sometimes lead to remote code execution RCE, and here we can find a lot of ways to do that. Basically, as you probably know, the PHP's include directive is normally used to load code files. So if only we can store our malicious code somewhere on the server, we would be able to run it just by pointing to its path. Quick look at the available options, and this one is promising. LFI to RCE via controlled log file. Can we see the log file for this server? Let's try the first one from the top slash var, slash log, apache, access log. Nope, doesn't work. Next one, slash var, slash log, apache, error log. Hmm. No luck either. Third one, 
slash var slash log slash apache2 slash access dot log. Oh, this one shows us full access log and every time we enter that page, there is a new entry showing up. It contains the information about the access URL, HTTP method, status code, probably the response size and our web browser name. Hmm. This seems to be a good place to inject some code. Let's recreate the request in Insomnia Client. I was talking about this tool in one of my previous videos showing right now in the top right corner. This time it's going to be simple. Let's put the URL to the challenge website and set our user agent header to include malicious code. Instead of poisoning the log file every time we would like to run a command, let's do something more flexible. PHP echo shell exec and let's take a command to run in server's shell from the get parameter named cmd and end the php code block. This way we can poison it once and then enter the site multiple times, running various commands with the same line of PHP code, executing it on the target machine. Great. Let's try if it works. Seek for the flag. Starting with the current directory, we can set ls command as a value of our CMD parameter. Take a look at the response. It takes a moment to find it between the logs, but here we can see the result of running our command. Two files located in current directory. None of them seems to be the flag. Let's change CMD parameter saying we'd like to see the contents of the root directory. ls plus slash plus here replaces space character. And here they are, root directory files and folders. And one of them is called hidden flag. Now we just need to include it using our LFI. Let's change our URL here, press enter, and <laughs> we've got our flag. And we did it using not one, but multiple chain vulnerabilities. It's so cool. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know in the comments what vulnerability you'd like to see in next episodes of CTF School. Like and subscribe not to miss new videos and community posts. Till the next time. Bye bye. bye.